Now, from across the Tri-State, this is KHQA Sports. And top of the evening, everybody, and welcome to Sports Final, where, like it or not, basketball season is now officially in the gloaming, Ross. It is indeed. And in that spirit, we have regional semifinals in Illinois, small school girls basketball to bring you. Plus, we were, we were there as a pair of Tri-State Stars notched their 1,000th career points tonight. But we will start with a reversal of fortune in the Illinois State Capitol. Not a good night for Quincy Notre Dame. Rarely is when they travel to Sacred Heart Griffin. Quincy Notre Dame tonight losing a 58 55 decision. Quincy Notre Dame led by double digits in the first quarter. Unfortunately for the Raiders, outscored in the second quarter, the third quarter, and the fourth quarter. Alex Fitch had 18 points to lead his team, but Quincy Notre Dame goes down to feet. Again, final count in that one was 58 to 55. Ross. Pace in the West Central. Indians coming off that very nice win against Liberty last week, so they were trying to get it done again at home. Early on, though, for West Central, it was Colin Vandeville driving, scoring, and getting it done. And then after that would be Austin Bays driving himself, getting into the lane, hitting this floater, and finishing nicely. But Jake Voss is going to play a little defense here, and they turn it up court so quick and pace. And Jake Voss, you'll see, is going to go to Lance Bulick to Cody Hildebrand, and Hildebrand will finish this one off on the other end. Easy layup there. And then Hunter Flester playing a little bit of defense of his own, the SWAT. And again, they'll turn it up floor. Cody Hildebrand, he had a nice night, go figure. 34 points and one right there. And then you'll see Bays here with another slash, but Payson takes a lead early and they get it done. West Central does keep it close. Final score 59 to 48. Hildebrand with 34 points. How about West Hancock and Liberty up in Warsaw tonight? And the big heads are out in full force. You know it's going to be a fun night then. We will start off with Michael Blewett late in this game, hitting a three pointer deep right wing there, and that's true. Later on, blew it high off the window. He can score from outside and he can drive and go over the defenders. Very nice precision for Mr. Blewett there. Coy Dorothy, though, in the corner. They love having him back. And that three ball goes down for the Titans. Parker Gibbs in close as well. Real quickly, you'll see him getting it done. West Hancock gets out to a win in this one, 58 to 42 on their home court. Scoreboard time in Illinois. Unity tonight knocks off Grigsville Perry, 55 to 47. Andrew Doyle leading the way with 15 points there. Illini West has no trouble avoiding the upset bug against Camp Point Central, winning 54 to 32. Matthew Ramsey with a monster night for Southeastern in a win by 20 at Rushville Industry. Final count in that one was 61 uh, 41 in that ball game. Also tonight, Brown County knocked off by Western. Isaac Hively with 16 points in that ball game and route tonight a winner over Calvary of Springfield 65 to 54. Clark County visiting Mark Twain one of the hottest teams in the area. Jason Church out of retirement coaching tonight as Adam Rung was out with the flu. That is a quality quality goatee working by Mr. Church. <laughs> Early on Logan Epperson he was the deal in the first quarter firing from three gives his team a 5-0 lead. Kyle Kovar going to try to answer at the other end for Clark County but Clark County was on the business end of a juggernaut tonight again. This time it's Ethan Anderson with a steal and again Logan Epperson finishes and finishes nicely in a monster first quarter with 11 points. I'll prove it to you yet again. Garrett Jarman's going to find him, and there's Logan spotting up and dropping down. 11 of his 13 points all in the first quarter. Clark County desperately trying to answer Austin Egley. Pretty take for the point guard there. But you know what? Garrett Jarman had this thing tonight. It was the night he would score his 1,000th career point. It was also the night he'd make sensational seven. Buzzer beater, yep. And that's going to go for him. Great night for him. More to come. Great, great passing right here coming from the Mark Twain Tigers. I told you they're red hot, showing great improvement. Again, Ethan Anderson with a steal going to find Logan Epperson in transition. This is just great ball movement. Mark Twain was doing this big time in the first half. They led by as many as 15. Jarman does get his 1,000th career point coming up here on a free throw after this three. Good stuff from Jarman. Good stuff from the Twain Tigers tonight as they win again. They're about a whisker away from being undefeated in conference conference play, I should say. 59-55 is your final on that one. How about the Canton Tigers going for win? Number 21 tonight at the expense of Scotland County. Scotland County going to start off at least nicely in this one behind Lucas Howard. Who else fighting the Canton D in the paint and giving his team the early lead? And then Canton throws down the accelerator in this game. Gabe McKenzie doing his thing in the first with a jumper from 15 feet. More to come right here from Tyler Neiman. 
Oh, he's going to finish the break right here. These guys just so athletic and so energetic. How about Cameron Durst finishing in the pink out night tonight? And he's just going to punk out his opponents with the pink out there. All Canton in this ball game as the Tigers beat Scotland County 78 to 44. Elsewhere in Missouri tonight, Derek Smith leads Highland to a home win over Monroe City. Actually, check that. That was a road win tonight. Also, Louisiana red hot as well, beating and upsetting Palmyra tonight. 67-63, Tristan Castilla with 17 points in that ball game. Boonville too much for Hannibal tonight. South Shelby gets a monster night from Andre McClure in beating up on Brookfield and clopped in order over Wright City. Ross. Playoff basketball in Illinois. The 2A Liberty Regional is the top seed Pittsfield going against the four seed Beardstown. And early on, the Lady Tigers really putting a fight up. Jill Harris waiting, thinking and she'll just go ahead and take the shot, knock it down from mid-range right there. But Shea O'Brien, she is so tough to stop, especially when she gets just a little bit of space to the basket. She will take it all the way strong for the layup. Later on, it will be a miss, but Alyssa Hebner, who's really put together a nice end of the season, going to rebound and score off the putback there for two. But as I mentioned, Beardstown not making this easy for Pittsfield. Kate Herter, the head fake and the drive, and she scores right there. And Herter later would hit a turnaround in the paint, but too much Shea O'Brien tonight. She'll hit a long three here in just a moment as Pittsfield gets the win 40 to 29 in this one. So the top seed advances to face the winner of Liberty and Central Southeastern. It was the two seed Liberty against Central Southeastern. The three seed will take you to the fourth quarter. Eagles down by six. Lanessa Graham, though, cuts that deficit right in half. Big three right there to keep things interesting. But Madison Steinkamp there for some second chance points to stretch that deficit just a little bit more for Central Southeastern. Give them a comfortable lead. You see Steinkamp right there cleaning up. Madeline Heyer, though, keeping it within reach for Liberty. They just wouldn't go, with, go away in this one. A scramble for the ball. She comes up with it and scores. Ashlyn May hits another late three for the Eagles to keep it interesting. But in the end, the final minute, it was Dakota Limpkeman. She had 13 points. She would ice it away with her free throws. Tori Conover with 11 points and Madeline Heyer with 12. As Central Southeastern gets the upset tonight, they will play Pittsfield after a 38-33 win. Now the bad news. West Hancock's fine season comes to an end at the hands of Havana, 57-50, which means Havana will face the winner of tomorrow. Tomorrow night's Illini West Midwest Central game in the championship in Macomb on Thursday. Quincy Notre Dame girls, regular season action, taking on Keokuk, and they, guess what, are pretty good. Cassidy Gegenbacher, go figure this one with the take, the bucket, and the band aid that Jordan Furex playing distributor. Look at a beautiful no look pass inside to Mary Beth Hugenberg. Keokuk overwhelmed a bit in this ballgame, trying to find something, anything. Allison Hughes, she'd provide a little bit of fun right there and a little bit of a spark. Just too much Jordan Furex. A monster night for her, 19 and 11 tonight. And she can transition like a point guard. Beautiful stuff from Jordan as the Lady Raiders go to 22 and 0. They get the big time victory tonight. Final on this one was 81 to 38. As I said, Cassidy Gingenbacher with 22 points. Central Lee Ross. Central Lee and Fort Madison tonight. Tracy Keller knocking on the door. 1,000 points. More on that in just a moment. Megan Spears, short jumper, gets it to go. And Jordan Greenfield on the other end of things. The nice drive and bucket here. Kids, this is how you use the glass. It makes you much more effective of a shooter, as Jordan Greenfield shows you right there. Spears again, though. She'll come up off the miss right here and score the second chance bucket. She did some work tonight, but it would be Reagan Shockley. Beautiful pass here to Bailey McCoy all alone in the back door there. Nice to Tracy Keller. You'll see here the layup as she runs the floor. She has 18 points tonight, including her 1,000th of her career. So congratulations to Tracy. Taylor Burdett, 10 points, 11, 11 rebounds, 59 to 38 win tonight for Central League. So Missouri scores the pass along Mark Twain, a winner at home over Clark County, 50 to 34. We've got Highland getting knocked out by Monroe City and a big night from Leah Elvis behind the arc. South Shelby comes up just short in an upset bid at Brookfield. Palmyra gets the big time win. Palmyra now 6 0 in conference play, beaten up on Louisiana 71 to 19. Centralia today upsets Macon at Macon 45 to 41. The Marion County girls are tonight. And it would be at the Brashear tournament. All Marion County in this ballgame all the time. Kaylin Spratt, this is what she does. Larceny and layup, and it's good, and she was good. Sadie Pollard about to make her presence felt as well in this one. Novinger just no match for Marion County at Brashear tonight. Sadie Pollard with great take. How about some Kaylin Spratt off the drive as well, as we will leave you with Marion County getting the big time victory tonight. Rolling away from this one, 67 to 35 with your final. Ross. Canton and Scotland County girls rule quickly. Start off with Scotland County Megan. Three, a two from the wing, that's good to go right there. But Canton would answer with a little bit of Courtney Ballman, the drive and the score amongst traffic. That's a very tough shot. 
Gets it to go. Alexis Dodge, though, keeps it rolling for Scotland County in this one. Off the inbounds, hits the long shot right there. As Scotland County out to the lead. Baldwin, though, in the paint would score again, but it's not enough as Scotland County gets the win tonight over Canton. Final score in that ball game. Actually, didn't see it, but I do know that Scotland County did win this game. I believe it was 31 to 16, if I remember correctly. Somewhere in that ballpark. We do apologize on that. Coming up tomorrow is National Letter of Intent Day. All your football signings right here. Student Athlete of the Week gets pushed to Thursday. It will be Ashton Luttrell, the outstanding Highland recovering point guard from her injury. We'll talk to her on Thursday. We'll see you then, everybody.